And this is Tommaso Champa. You're listening to WNS Podcast. You're listening to the official Wrestling News Source Podcast. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com or check us out on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsSource.com or WNS Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube, Twitter, Stitcher, and iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast or WNS Podcast. Now being broadcast in over 45 different countries, here are your hosts, Daniel Heron, Tyler Bear, and Doug. That's right. What's up, everyone? I am Daniel Heron. I'm Tyler A. Bear. I'm Doug. And we welcome you to episode 325 of the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, WNS Podcast, on YouTube, WNS Video, and on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. You can find us in many spots of the internet. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, I didn't know. Throw them off. It's good. Uh, we're on Stitcher. Beyond Pod, Player.fm, and Satchel. Just search for us in source podcast to find us. Tyler's bad at improvisation, but <laughs> but you can follow the podcast on Twitter at WNS Podcast. Daniel's at WNS underscore Daniel. Tyler's at Tyler underscore Amber. Hey, guys. Welcome to the show. We certainly appreciate everyone taking time out of their day or whatever it is, their Night. evening. Uh, to listen to the show. Morning. We've got a lot to cover this week. We've got feedback, NXT TakeOver, Backlash, Raw, SmackDown, Hot Topics, all that good stuff, and much, much more. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a, a more of a somber episode to start things off because of what happened in Manchester. Uh, it, you know, For those who are unaware, who you know have not followed any social media of any kind over the past few days, uh, there was a uh, an explosion at Manchester Arena during a Ariana Grande concert. Um, you know, fans were 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 killed for no reason. And uh, you know, I just wanted to take the time, start the show before we get into the fun and lighthearted stuff, um, to offer our condolences to the families, um, to the people who were in attendance, to the families, the friends that it affects, uh, the people of Manchester. Uh, you are definitely in our thoughts. So. Um, you know, hopefully this, the show can provide a little bit of a distraction from all the sadness that's going on in the world. Um, whether you think we're funny or not, you know, that's, that's not the important thing. It's, it's coming together as a, as, I don't know, as a human being and being well to one another. That's, that's the most important. Um, so Tyler, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. Yeah. Just um, work and being obsessed with Pokemon Go. Yeah? Yeah. You got your little... I got the Pokemon Go Plus. Yeah. And I am walking and walking. walking. Are you walking on sunshine? Yeah. All right. Catch anything good? Uh, No. Not yet. It's just um, common stuff. Or there's some things I need mm. to get candy. But, Bubblegum uh, and taffy? Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Doug, how are you? I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah. Hanging in there? Yeah. Survived the uh, the rainy day from, what was it, yesterday? Uh, I think Monday, it was, right? I think it was Monday. Man. Monday. I'm getting yeah. lost in my days. It also yeah. rains, I think, all day Sunday, right? Uh, Does it, this coming Sunday? This past Sunday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think Monday was a bad day, but... Mm. I think it rained a little bit Tuesday night, but had some beautiful weather today for sure. Um, so yeah, so welcome to the show. Like I said, we've got a lot to cover, so we'll just jump right into it. Uh, we have one bit of feedback this week, and it's from James saying, "I always enjoy the show after watching Raw and SmackDown live this week. I think SmackDown Live has me interested more to see the Money in the Bank ladder match than Raw's Fatal Five Way Extreme Rules match." Um, yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's sort of the top top guys in on both sides vying for the the championship opportunity or the money in the be- bank briefcase. Money in the beam. Yes. Um, so yeah, yeah, at at first glance, I'm I'm more intrigued about the money in the bank, just to see who's going to win it because only one person has won it so far. So we'll see what happens in the uh, in the weeks to come. Uh, but thank you, James, for the feedback. We certainly do appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about NXT TakeOver, because that took place on Saturday night. And um, 
I didn't get to watch it start to finish. I did, in a sense, catch all of the matches, um, with the exception of maybe Bobby Roode and Hideo Itami. But uh, from everything that I saw, it was a great NXT takeover. The UK Championship was phenomenal. The Authors of Pain versus DIY match was That was excellent. the only one I missed. That one was excellent as well, not even including what happened after that match, which was great as well. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. The first contest was uh, Roderick Strong <coughs> defeating Eric Young. This is actually a better match than I uh, thought it would be. Yeah. Um, just because... Okay, I watch... I don't watch NXT that often. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll catch certain things. But um, I remember stuff, you know, Eric works, uh, Eric Young's work mm-hmm. in TNA and stuff, but I don't remember him ever being a spectacular and stuff like that. But in this match with him and Roderick, they put on a good show. Yeah, I think they put on a, a, a strong performance as well. How about you, Doug? I thought it was fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would agree with you that I thought the the show as a whole was was a banger, but uh, you know this this I thought was just sort of there. I mean, I don't think anything on the show at all was bad mm-hmm. in any sense, but I thought this was just fine. And it's hard to com- it's really hard to get worked up and complain about things being just fine when there is like really stellar stuff in the rest of the show. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, in a sense, like I get. I, again, nothing was bad, and I don't necessarily have a problem with Eric Young. And you know, my feelings about Bobby Roode are sort of sort of known, but it's and again, this is it's sort of hard, a little bit of you know sort of, sort of hard to complain about everything when the show was so good overall. But you know, I, I, if I'm being honest with myself, whenever I look at these cards and I see like an Eric Young on the show, and I understand sanity is a big part of what they're doing in NXT. Mm-hmm. But when I look at these cards and I see like an Eric Young match and a Bobby Roode match, and I understand Bobby Roode is the champ, or whatever. But when I see these guys on the show, and then I see like people like Cassius Ono and see it almost riding the pine, <laughs> I, I got to be honest, I, it's a little bit disappointing to me that that you know, who's riding the pine versus who is like being showcased on these, these big shows. And, you know, I don't know. I, again, I know scenery is a big part of what they're doing in NXT, but I don't know, like, you know, that I need to see, or I don't understand why, how they could the, ultimately, I know that there were storyline reasons for this match playing out, Yeah, but ultimately I don't know why this needed to take over match. This sort of took a spot of, I'd much rather see a guy like even Alistair black, like, or, yeah. Almas or Ono, like those dudes are riding the pine, and I feel like they're better put to use on a show like this. Mm. You know what I mean? Than than Eric Young, and I, I agree. And, and it's not necessarily that I have a problem with Eric Young or Sanity as a group because I think they can sort of be used in a cool way when they're sort of in the spot. But I just don't know that. Uh, given my druthers, you know, I'd rather like you know, I'd rather some other dudes make it on the show than, than these guys. I agree. I agree. Well, here's one aspect to that uh, that debate. Um, I felt like this was more of a we're going to try and elevate Roderick Strong. So let's put him up against Eric Young. He's a you know, he's a he's a known name. He's he can take the loss uh as opposed to putting him up against uh, a CN. Uh you know, cuz would you want would you want Roderick to to defeat CN? Well, the the sort of the way they're booking almost is like wins and losses don't matter. He they're mm. they're sort of like dancing around the and Gober and Oblase thing without actually calling it that and doing that so to where the wins and losses don't necessarily matter to him. So if you're going to book him to lose, if his storyline and he's a guy who who's doing shit that's making him lose all the time, mm-hmm. then, you know, yeah, I, I think I'm more interested in an almost Roddy match than in all, if he's going to lose anyway, than a, than a Roddy or a young match. And, th- and this is sort of nitpicking because the match was fine. Right. But I'm just saying like, when it's I almost look in the crowd, and I see like oh no in the crowd, and I was like, well, you know, it'd be it'd be nice if we could get him on the show. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's almost to the point where NXT is starting to get a little too big because you know, like you said, Ono was off the card, CN was off the card, McIntyre. Alice, yeah, Drew McIntyre was off the card, Alistair Black's off the card. Uh, who's and, the Who's the I, tag team that 
they might be feuding with authors of heavy pain machinery. Next, heavy machinery yes. off the card and here's the thing i don't want these takeovers to to blow up to more than two and a half hours like because i like yeah, this I nice clean two and a half hour show two and two hour to two and a half hour shows that's a nice fun easy watch i don't want these cards blowing up to like four hour events either right but you know i just you know it's just sort of the nature of having a pro wrestling podcast is to nitpick and shit like sure. you know so we're just going to talk Offer about our it. opinions on ours yeah on our so team. i mean there was nothing wrong with the match i understand why eric young's in nxt i understand why he got a match on the card i'm just saying it's a little bit for my own like aesthetic purposes it's it's a little bit annoying to see guys that i'm not in love with on the card versus these people who i feel like could be used in 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 bigger ways or sure who should be you know more of a priority to the to the brand you know what i mean yeah but you know it's whatever it's whatever i'm nitpicking because that's what we do on pro wrestling podcasts we <laughs> nitpick yeah you know i, I the with, show was a banger i feel like no, I'm, I, I, I feel like i'm like coming there were, yeah there were no bad yeah. matches in on this card they were all solid and it feels like i'm coming off like starting this off on a negative note but it's it's <laughs> no. not really that yeah, I mean it's two crafty veterans. They know, you know, they know what they're capable of doing. They went out there and put on a good performance. Um, they, I mean, I did like the Roddy thing of he knows he's outnumbered and outgunned, so he he sneaks up on him. And, yeah, that was a nice. Yeah, uh, that was cool. That was smart. Um, to my knowledge, before NXT, did Eric Young? He's never fought Roderick before. I think. I mean, for years he was in TNA. I don't know what he did after he left TNA, but I mean, I know Roderick had that brief TNA run, but I don't honestly remember like way back in the day, like maybe gener- an like, so weird, or man. It's uh, okay. like generation next days. He, he did a, a, a TNA run, but I don't know if he ever mixed it up with it. I'll tell you what, man, I, I know it's this like every now and then, but like weird matchups, like I've never seen before, like excite me. It is through yeah. weird, like, First time matches. Yeah, and you know, I know they've been having a feud and stuff like that, but it's like I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, oh, Eric Young, TNA, mm-hmm. Roger Strong, ROH, you know, and like they're in WWE, and I don't know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Eric Young. Uh, Eric Young loses uh, to Roderick Strong. So congratulations to Roddy on that one. Uh, up next was the United Kingdom Championship match, and. Holy this shit. shit. This one's going to be talked about for a while. Uh, I can easily see this being a lot of front runners for uh, match of the year. You know, bef- before we can enter this, you know, with the UK championship, mm-hmm. um, it's weird because they don't defend it that often. And I don't know if the UK guys do house shows a lot or they tour with the NXT, but you don't really, I mean, we haven't been seeing too much of them. I know they have the UK. Yeah. Uh, thing uh, the, uh, Friday, Friday before the takeover, or that was filmed. How mm-hmm. I don't know, way before that, I don't know, but um, not that long ago. We yeah, probably past, like two, two or three weeks. Door. But I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be like a continuous thing. Are they gonna add them? To well, they're the getting NXT? their own shows. They keep saying they're getting their own show. Which well, I hope. I mean, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe it just takes some time to straighten out all this stuff, and how we'll put them with NXT maybe for a little bit until they get their. <laughs> Putting sure the, well, the I show mean, wise. I mean, I really think like in a perfect world, like I would like to see what Daniel said as far as folding two hundred five into NXT and folding the UK guys into NXT and that having that sort of yes, yeah. they do have their own shows, but they can come together on bigger shows and they can sort of mix and match. Like there are two hundred five guys on the UK special. I think all those guys together, sort of as like a little. Uh, pseudo brand or whatever. Mm, yeah. I think they all mix together fine. I think. The 205ers that aren't getting over to the extent that we had hoped some of them would already have followings in that circle of fans that are going to appreciate those mm-hmm. those yeah. brands being folded into each other. So you know, I, I would like to see I, – I, I mean, I think UK can do their own like weekly show or whatever they intend to do with them, and there could still be a 205 weekly show. There's still a weekly NXT show, but I think there are ways to like fold these guys into – like mix them in and out of each other's shows, yeah. put them – bring them together on big shows. I think that makes a nice little niche, whatever. Yeah. And it brand. would give some of the talent over who are trying for the UK championship – who might not be in the spotlight, they could go after the cruiserweight if they're in that category, or they could go for the NXT tag titles or something like that. Yeah. I think that that would... Maybe I just haven't been keeping up with this, but, like, Tyler Bate did good, but it doesn't seem like they have, you know, 
I don't know. He hasn't gotten much time to shine. I mean, he's had I a saw few defenses. With, um, they fought, had, they've had them name? on NXT a couple of times. They did that yeah. special. They did the, t- the actual tournament. They're, they haven't been... They've been saying they're going to do things more than they've actually been doing things. Mm-hmm. But man, those are two great competitors, man. Yeah, I mean, this matchup, like I said, is going to be talked about for, for some you time. You see Tyler Bates' legs, man? This dude's jacked in his legs, man. <laughs> yeah. um, it was, I mean, it was... Even more special because Jim Ross was there calling the action as well. Uh, I like the fact that Nigel kind of took the helm and and Jim Ross more so played into him. Um, they had uh, they had really good chemistry for two guys no, who it's hadn't happened before. But like, if, just think about that. If you ever imagine that Jim Ross and Nigel. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, Doug, what do you think about the matchup itself? I thought it was phenomenal. I mean, you, you talked a little bit about. I mean, people talking about this in the mix of like match of the year and shit like that. I mean, I feel like up to this point, and and I feel this has been a down year for me in terms of like volume of like content I've been able to watch. But like as of right now, this is probably you know the thing that I've seen th- that I would feel like is the best at, at, to this point in mm-hmm. this year. And um, this is your front runner at the moment. Yeah, at the moment, and um, I thought. It's weird to say, like, people are throwing around the star-making performance thing, and that's a little bit weird to say because I feel like... Huh? Say that again? They're throwing... I mean, people are throwing around the... the this was a star-making performance oh, for these gotcha. guys around a lot. And I... Honestly, I would hope that that would be true, but I feel like if we if we, if we slow our rolls a little bit and look at the, this through the context of, like, the Cruiserweight Classic, I felt like there were guys who had, quote-unquote, star-making performances mm-hmm. that didn't translate. And maybe that's further booking that dropped the ball or whatever you want to say. There are reasons to that you could blame on why some of these guys don't have the steam coming off that tournament that we thought they would or should have. And hopefully that's not the case with these two. Hopefully they're going to capitalize off this. So, but I, I'm just cautious to say this is a star making performance because I feel like we got a little bit of evidence that sort of like contradicts that already. So I don't know. I, I but whether it is or not, it was a phenomenal performance and an excellent match. And I feel like the right guy won. I feel like Tyler Bates, is, uh, t- Tyler Bate, excuse me, is like overall a better performer than than Pete Dunn. I think he, he's more versatile. He's better at a lot of other... Sh- like, he's more well-rounded. He's more versatile. He's a lot better at a lot of different things than Pete Dunn is. But the reason I think it's so... why What makes Pete Dunn so good and why I think it's good for him to be a champ is that what Pete Dunn has that the debate doesn't have is he knows his character really well. He's got the, the psychology of his character down really well. And he just... He, that kind of stuff that bait like haven't worked out for himself yet. And it's a little bit hard to do that as a baby face, you know, mm-hmm. but, and, and not that Dunn is a slouch. I'm not saying that Dunn is a terrible wrestler or anything. I'm just saying like, overall, I think bait is, you know, an all around better performer than, than Dunn with the exception of character and psychology, which Dunn like probably far exceeds him in the, in those, <laughs> in those, those categories. You know what I mean? And that's what sort of makes him, also, I mean, I guess they just sort of, I guess it depends on if you think the show should be built around a heel champ or a face champ. And, right. I, you know, he's got the probably the most notoriety out of all the people like that have been involved in associated with the UK thing. So he, it makes sense that he's the guy. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's the right move. And uh, I don't know. I just thought it was a really good match. I just, um, I don't know. We'll see what they do. Like. <laughs> it's it's hard to tell like if it, I, mean, I hope we get a rematch at least. Well sure. Yeah. Well sure. Dude, Maybe. like they're both good. Tyler Bateman for a 20-year-old. Yeah. Holy shit. He's barely 20. He was 19 when he won the belt. Yeah. Holy moly. What am Dunn's I doing with my life? Good. Jeez. He's 20 years old. Dunn's only like 22 or 23. But I mean, they're, oh, man, they're both good and they're like super young, man. I'll be honest, I laughed a lot during this match just because of how fun it was to watch. Like these guys, they went to town. They it was hard hitting. There was it was action packed. The crowd was so into it. 
Like I was just having so much fun watching it. Hell, man, I would. I'm probably watch it again soon. Mm-hmm. Make a plan to. Um, but yeah, Pete Dunne defeats Tyler Bate to become the new United Kingdom champion. And uh, man, if you have not watched this, you owe it to yourself to check out this match because it's definitely awesome. Part of my top five. <laughs> my <laughs> five. five. Um, up next, they had the uh, the women's NXT Championship match. Ashka going up against Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross in a triple threat match. Um, so. Oscar's hill ish in a sense yeah she's just cocky she's a little over cro- uh, over cocky um so what the plan was to well we don't know for sure but we think maybe they're supposed to, ember moon was supposed to take it from i think that her. might be the plan eventually uh i did find it interesting that at nxc takeover san antonio it was a fatal four way and then we come to here where it was going to be a fatal four-way but it got turned into a triple threat and they were almost building it as the triple threat was the bigger threat i mean you gotta the next show you gotta make it you know this one's a a bigger threat you know it's coming up so i'm curious to whenever (laughs) ember moon comes back for her injury if they're gonna push her into the into the limelight and maybe have her be the one back into nxt because i will like check out matches they'll mm-hmm. see like on facebook they post oh check this out this moment or whatever and i'll check it out but i don't catch the full show which i need to because i would like to get back fully into it and because mm-hmm. all the women i'm not familiar with all the women yeah i know there's like you know billy k and uh, her friend peyton R- royce peyton and royce you know uh ember moon uh ruby riots and nikki cross but the other girls well they're in a they're in a transition phase where they're bringing in a lot of new talent um, so, you know, they're, I guess if the, when the day comes that Asuka goes up to the main roster, they'll at least have some established stars already there, but I don't know. Um, Doug, what'd you think of the matchup? I thought it was good. Um, it did seem to be more about, cause it was, it was more so that, m- <sighs> I mean, the story is basically that she was so dominant that she pinned both. She pinned, but she literally pinned both <laughs> of them. Yeah, which is, I guess, it's not that big of a deal for like a Ruby Ray because she doesn't have a ton of momentum. It's not like she's like coming into like hot on the like title contention. I the reason they were all in this match is because there was a there was a four way Oscar interrupted and she's like, oh. And Regal was like, "Oh, you think that shit's cool? Well, you're gonna fucking, you're gonna work them all then. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, <laughs> I and then Ember Moon like gets hurt, so that's why it's not a, a four way or whatever. But it's a network; they should be able to get away with saying whatever they want, right? Wait, what did I say? You're like, you're gonna fucking work all of them. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Drop them bombs. That's just how I talk. I'm sorry. No, 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 like, no, no. I don't even realize I'm saying the words I say <laughs> at the time. No, it's fine. My bad. We want to hear it. Yeah. Um. Well, good because I mean I don't necessarily know that I can just not. <laughs> It's is for myself. Kimber, like, on the roster? Yet? I think she's officially signed. I know she she's worked she's worked at XT shows. I know she's had matches and stuff, but I don't know that I don't know what her deal is. I don't know if it's a because it's her a, and, uh, exclu- I don't know if it's an exclusive deal or not. I, I, for- I think it is. I forgot her name before she was Ruby Riot. Kimberly. No. Blue pants? Oh, oh! I thought you meant oh, Heidi Loveless. Is... Yeah, because sh- didn't they come in at the same time, or yes. they got signed at the same time? They both time? came in at the same time. Blue pants. Blue pants. I mean, they may be <laughs> they may be waiting for this tournament to heat up a lot of a lot of them. Oh, I know they got like gotcha. yeah, yeah. Shirai and Hojo coming in from Japan. Like you know who else? Who even knows like who else they're bringing in for this fucking thing? I mean, do you recall how many? Uh, I didn't see a list. How many? There, I don't think they haven't there released is a list, a list yet. Oh, they haven't. Mm-hmm. But did they? Did they say? Did they say a number? Like how many competitors or whatever? Uh, not that I remember. They I'll try and find it. That. that probably will come out whenever they have the the names or whatever. But shit, man. WWE is taking all your wrestlers. Pretty I mean, they much. kind of are. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, you look at um, the number. Yeah, I was gonna try to. Hey, it's not important. I'm just saying. Uh, but yeah, the women's tournament is going to be coming up. Uh, they're calling it the May Young Classic. Yep. Going to take place July 13th and 14th. 
So she got July look Fourth, America. Sure, you could do that. I'm just, I'm just and July is going to be a big month for wrestling. Mm-hmm. Access is airing that fucking um, the American New Japan G1 specials live on Access. Is it oh, wow. the second of July or something like that? Whatever that Friday would be. But uh, there's that. There's I think the women's tournament's gonna be live. There's um there's a lot of shit going on in July. Hmm. Cool. I haven't found it um, yet. That's alright. But no, yeah, I enjoyed that match. Um heck yeah, I was more into it than uh I'm gonna be completely honest, when we went to San Antonio, hmm. I didn't really enjoy that match with that that the that fatal four way. Yeah, with those that ugh, I didn't yeah. like that at all. But this one was <laughs> entertaining. Yeah. Uh, but Asuka ends up retaining her NXT Asuka. Women's Championship. Who will be the one to dethrone her? We'll find out right. in time. Well, I mean, they literally showed Ember Moon like watching over the match. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, it's pretty clear they're at least going to revisit that once mm-hmm. she's healed. Uh, after that, we see it, we saw the uh, NXT Championship being defended. Bobby Roode going up against Hideo Itami. Did I didn't you get expect to ca- that to be second to last? Uh, I did last find it a little surprising. It caught me off guard, but once, once, one, I knew the match would be better, and they outperformed them, so it all makes all the sense in the world for them too. And then three, when you when you follow the matchup with that big angle, of course, that man. Yeah, um, I'm always skeptical of who is in the ring with Bobby Roode because Bobby Roode's like style to me doesn't match up with anyone he gets into the ring. But mm. this is better than I thought it was. Um. I know it takes two to tango, but uh, maybe because it was with Hideo in there and stuff. I, I don't know. I mean, I like Bobby's entrance and stuff like that. <laughs> and I there's a part of me that likes him, but I know that he's not, like, the best. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. Okay. How about you, Doug? I thought the match was perfectly fine. I didn't have any problems with it. I don't think it was bad, but I didn't think it was great or even good, really. I mean, maybe passable. I mean, um, passable is probably too. Passable is probably underselling it. I mean, it was probably, it was fine. It was fine. I I, I don't know how else to, to say it. I I don't want to under. I don't want to put too much emphasis on underselling well, it, and I I don't want to oversell it either. What was better, the Hideo, and Bobby Roode or Shinsuke and Bobby? Whatever uh, one you want to pick, whatever you want, the one or two. Honestly, I'm not even sure. I mean, I, 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 I think Rude is a very bland wrestler, and I think he's basically over just because of his music. Which, yep. but before we before we go on, I just want to say that I I don't know if it was just me or if it's something that was noticeable to everyone, but I felt like he, whatever whatever appeal he has or what, however over he has felt like it took a hit in this show. You could, he, he felt significantly less over with the crowd in the show. And I, and maybe mm. that's just me. Maybe no one else picked up on that, but I thought the crowd was less into him. Not that he wasn't over, not that the crowds turned on him, but I, I, I felt like I noticed a significant difference in crowd reaction that he, that he got like a step down. Well, from the parts of the match that I did see, I did, I could tell that the crowd was really split. There were the Hideo fans, and then there were the Bobby Roode fans. See, but the thing about that even is uh, Hideo has his fans, and Hideo's had a hard time finding his footing since he's been in NXT. Yeah. But whether people, uh, even at Hideo's most over, he has never been as over as Nakamura was. And I felt like Roode at least... I felt like this the split between Rude and Nakamura, I felt like he at least rivaled however Nakamura was. And and I felt yeah. I feel like if if the crowd's gonna split on you and Hideo, that's like a step down. You know do you, mm-hmm. I mean, does that make some sort of no, sense? No, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So and and, and I, I like Hideo a lot. I prefer Hideo to to Bobby Rude. I think Bobby Rude is really bland. But even I, like as a Hideo fan, can say Hideo has not found himself in NXT. He's had a rough time. He's been Injury. played. He's been played with injuries, and I, I think he never really found like what was going to work for him in NXT. He doesn't wrestle the same way he wrestled in Noah. He's like a different guy, and for whatever reason that is, is whatever reason that is. But 
I'm, I'm not blaming the match on it. Rude is what I'm saying is that I feel like you know it's it was it was fine. Hopefully and, he doesn't get injured again and he can try <laughs> to find his footing and. I don't know, but did, did no one else? You guys didn't feel like Rude was like a little like less over than usual. I didn't. Okay, I mean that's fair. I mean I I'm might. To think. It, it may just be me, but I felt. I would honestly like to hear people weigh in on this. I know we say that a lot, and then no one ever fucking answers. But really tell me if it was just me this time, because he felt... I'm not saying he wasn't over at all. I'm not saying the crowd flipped on him. I'm saying he felt less over than he has felt in the past. Mm. Like, the crowd is waning on, like... I know that they... It's getting old, or or they've they've seen it, like, you know, and and they're sort of over it. The NXT takeovers, they try to do, like, oh, let's um, try to do another entrance that's bigger and bigger. Yeah, You can't, you know, he's already done it. Only get so big. Yeah, this one was like. Eh. I think the choir entrance was probably the biggest and best that it's going to get. Yeah. So there was once, that time they did the really tall women. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, San Antonio. Uh, okay, yeah, we were like the, yeah. all those women those are, are really, really tall. tall. <laughs> yeah. That was that was that was the da- uh, no, San Antonio. Was, yeah. San Antonio. Uh, was that models or the, were they cheerleaders? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking of. Go ahead. Sorry. I mean, I don't. They I were lovely them. looking ladies who were. I don't know what I'm thinking of. No. I'm thinking we were just like they're really tall. I don't know yeah. because for whatever reason they were all really tall and they had heels too. How they found all those tall women? Searches. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Bobby Roode ends up getting the uh, the victory, retaining his NXT championship. He got kicked. <laughs> and uh, after NXT takeover, there was a WWE. Dot com whatever video of Hideo pissed yeah he was not happy backstage and uh, Cassius Ono tried to calm him down and um, Hideo pushed him and Ono didn't Which, like that too much this could be a, I guess because they're gonna have a match and if this turns into a few this is gonna be some good stuff so yeah maybe that maybe that Noah connection will come out because. I know he already did a lot of his Japan uh, Japan work in, in Noah, so maybe that like, and Hero is like a big like Noah Mark, and like maybe just that synergy between two old Noah guys will like bring it out. I just really, uh, I maybe mean, it was I, just his opponent. In this I just I just want to see around. Hideo like be Hideo like in wherever you stand on Hideo being Hideo is like, I just want to see some like brutal striking out of Hideo. Like I want him to just sort of like let loose and oh, I don't shit. want him, to, I don't want him injuring people or anything. I'm just saying, but like, you know, that, that confidence, he even got like a little shook. Like he fucked up his little, I mean, he didn't let it show, but he like, he, he messed up his little hop over, like little disrespectful back kick thing that he yeah. does, you know? And I, I just want, I want him to like find himself. I from, think this, I think that's going to happen with him and Cassius. I think, I think they're gonna have some good chemistry, all stuff. Um, okay, you know how when they bring in a certain indie talent to NXT, mm-hmm. and there was those rumors that like, oh, they're gonna be in NXT to help NXT. I was like with Samoa Joe, sure. stuff like that. I feel like Eric Young is gonna stay in NXT. Yeah, I don't unless know about- they decide to bring Sanity up as a whole new faction. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and I don't know about Bobby Roode. He may, st- I don't know if he stays in NXT or not because his age and yeah, I don't know if he's going to be on main roster, but I feel like those two get, I don't know. And l- good point about Sandy, if they don't bring them up or whatever, but I don't know. It's sort of hard to bring up a stable. I mean, I guess they did it with the Wyatts, but it's sort of hard to bring up like, and look where they are now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that brings us into the main event, and what a main event it was! Authors of Pain going up against DIY in a ladder match, and uh, this Do is another yourself. matchup. This was another absolutely solid matchup. Which I need to go back and watch because I missed. Yeah, I mean this, this, and the UK match were like worth that the was the show. It. Yeah, I mean <laughs> they you you can be very forgiving with the rest of the card when you get two bangers like like those. You know it's. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was a great match. I, I I think the UK match was better. Yeah. But, oh, man, this will be runner up for a match of the year. Man, I wish I wish San Antonio was like this card. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's still fun to go see San Antonio. No I feel like San, San Antonio was even more. This was like closer to like 
this is more in the middle of the transition period. Like we are still sort of transitioning in it, the identity of what NXT is now, but we're closer to the end of that trans- transition than we were in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so yeah, this matchup, oh my God, like I said, it was excellent. Um, hard hits. And when they hard ever kicks. shot, when they ever shot those ladders, they both yes. managed to overshoot those ladders. I remember you saying scary. something about that. I got to see how that. It was pretty scary. I know whenever I was watching a little bit a while ago, when they were trying to carry that ladder to the ring, they were kind of <laughs> like even, almost yeah. dropping it. Yeah. They end up jumping off of that, that particular ladder. Shit. Uh, and, you know, they had the ladder set up, they jump off, and it's like their knees hit where their chest was supposed to. So they hit and, and they fall forward and hit like head first and roll over. Did the Office of Pain take any crazy bumps or do any crazy shit? I know that's DIY, it's, you know, the high flyer stuff like that. They but. did, but they did, but it's sort of easier to pick out the DIY stuff. Yeah, I mean, Gargano you, you got the shit kicked out of him. Who did? What? Yeah. Gargano. Like you, you sort of can't be in this match and not take a crazy bump. You know what yeah. I mean? And the spot with the ladder into Gargano's face. Yeah. Like that was that was pretty rough. <sighs> yeah. It was uh it was great. It was a great match. It was a very good match. The angle of the play afterwards was pretty well done. Yeah. Really well done actually. It, even even the and I've heard so many people talking about it, like the little credit thing that they always do once they're about to sign off. Mm-hmm. They they put that and then they did the uh then they did the turn where uh well, because they did the whole, like, we're going to let the crowd, like, tell us, like, they show appreci- their appreciation. Uh, and it was almost like it was almost like a goodbye. Like, they set it up like a, yeah. like, we're done, you know, and then we're going to let people tell us bye. And so they let it linger for a long time. Like, yeah. they, like, all the way up the ramp, they did the, it's, they, they bowed and thanked in the ring all the way up to the ramp. And then not only did they get all the way up to the ramp, but the camera like cut focus off of it before like going back to it. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? So, so did you expect Tommaso to turn on Gargano or vice versa? I mean, come on, Gargano's the baby face of the two. <laughs> <laughs> if Johnny I, Wrestling, yeah. I know, but I mean, I mean, we've seen his hill stuff, and you know, that's a, uh, but that's so like sort of far removed from, from like this team and how he's been presented in NXT. We we'll get the Sicilian, Sicilian psychopath. Mm-hmm. Can't say that. And what's funny is like right before the turn, uh, Champa turns to Gargano and he says something, and then he throws him into the uh, into the LED screen or whatever. Uh, he later went on to tweet out what he said. It, he said, "This isn't our moment. This is my moment." And that's when he does it. Bitch. And uh, and he goes ballistic on Gargano, throwing him off the table, through some other tables, and. You know, it was uh, it was crazy. It was splitting them up. You know that leaves another hole with tag teams and stuff like that mm-hmm. to bring more up. Then also how we were talking about you know how people get shuffled. You know there's not time or room or yeah. whatever. So then that's gonna be another single thing on there, which is gonna be great. Don't get me wrong. You know Gargano and Champa fighting each other now. Yeah, I'm looking forward to their feud, and then I hear that they might be getting called up soon. As singles competitors, so yeah, I kind of felt like that means two of our below though. Yeah, but either way, I mean, it will be some much needed star power on two of five live. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is it though? I, it's always so hard to tell who translates from being. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's you, always you don't know because I mean, look, they the the same building. Takeover was film or was Takeover was in the same building as Backlash, right? Yeah, like that. The crowd for Takeover is a, obviously a completely different crowd for Backlash because not only was the crowd high, but they were like into all the shit. And they, mm-hmm. there wasn't look this Takeover crowd did chants that I think are a little bit passe and a little get the great on my nerves a little bit. But they were a good crowd. They didn't do anything yeah. annoying. They weren't like they didn't like have stuff that they didn't give a fuck about or whatever. Like each ball. Yeah. They were into all the shit yeah. and, and they, they didn't even, and not even in the like, Oh, like we're going to do like 
something stupid like thank you Champa or you know what or whatever you know like even if they were into like Champa his performance they showed their appreciation with the desired uh, effect that, that, that he was trying to get it by treating him like an you asshole. You got him to chant fuck you Champa. Yeah 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 but, <laughs> but here's the thing they like Champa. Yeah. They don't but it not, was so well they, done. They don't not like Champa, but they were just like into the show. So when he was an asshole, hit the 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 response he was trying to elicit, they gave him. They, yeah. they didn't cheer him despite like, yes, we love you, Champa. Yeah. Great performance. They were like, nah, fuck you, because that's what he was trying to get. And they gave him that. Yeah. So that's why it's so hard to tell because the next night the crowd was apathetic as fuck to the whole show of Backlash. Mm-hmm. And not that you know, not that you could blame them much because the show was <laughs> was pretty hemming and hawing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's why it's so hard. Like that's obviously different fans in that crowd. Like in a lot because it's not like there was that many. I don't think either show was a was a sellout, but it's not like Backlash or it's not like Takeover was like empty seats or anything. Right. They they had a lot of people there. Yeah. So like it's hard to tell like who came out for what show for what reason or whatever and like you know. Mm-hmm. That crowd is is obviously mm-hmm. some of that crowd is obviously still at the backlash show, but they're like dispersed between the crowd, like right. it, you know. And so it's like different. It's hard to tell if those guys would be a big deal, like if they get called up. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then it, then you also have to go based on what city they go to. Does that crowd watch NXT? Do they follow any of the storylines? Do they know who these people are? And it's not completely on the guys either. It's like how yeah. they're presented when they're getting brought yeah. up and. Uh, but I think also one of the biggest things, the r- biggest reason why the crowd bit into the reaction that or that they gave was because they still cared about DIY. Like, every once in a while there's that team that just runs its course so that whenever they do break up, the crowd is fine with it. They're like, good, thank God, you know, we can move on from this. But this one, they, are in the, they were in the height of their popularity. Like, they were probably the most popular team on this card, the, you know, the two most popular guys. Um, yeah, you're. I mean, you're. You're completely right. That's a very good point because when a team breaks up, there are two reactions that you get. Oh, they're doing the typical break up the tag mm-hmm. team thing, but this that's not what they got with no, this. Yeah. There's like people still, like you said, people very much like this team. People very much care about this team, and they're very sad to see this team go. Yeah. They didn't give them the. Oh, of course they're doing the break up the team. Yeah. Angle. It was and, what the hell are y'all doing? And, no! and, and in all honesty, if they're not going to put the belts on them, there was nothing else for them to do as a exactly. team. Exactly. So it's perfectly fine to break them up here. Yeah. And I'm so thankful that the crowd gave them that reaction. You know, the, and you know, I we we harp on crowds a lot on the show. I would like to give them a little bit of credit they because were a good crowd. there they were was a, a good, good crowd. crowd. There were a few CM Punk chants. And the fans that were next to those people started booing them, yeah. which got them to stop. Shut the fuck up. Not to that degree. They just booed oh, them. Yeah. So, you know, props to them. It's like, dude, let it go. Yeah. Let's watch this. You know, if if he's not coming back, then let's focus on what we've got. Yeah. Those people were policing our own scene. Like those people <laughs> police their own scene. Like we try to police our own scene and tell people when they're shitheads. Yes. I'm glad those people... Told those people they're shitheads, just like we when we're in crowds, we tell people when they're being shitheads. Yes. Police your own scene, you know, like make <laughs> your scene a better place. That's right. <coughs> Watch out for your section, man. Yep. Um, shut up about CM Punk. You go get a beer. <laughs> shut up. Uh, but the authors of pain do end up retaining, but that was not the main story uh, that we now learned. Uh, it was the fact that DIY is no more. Which is just going to be a good feud. So. Yeah. And these, I felt we really spent a lot of time talking about DIY, and I, I just want to say, like... Takes four to tango in well, this match. Well, no, but AOP has as strong as, like, a like a big match delivery record as, like, anybody, like, in the in NXT. They've mm-hmm. delivered in every big match they've had. Mm-hmm. And, yes, they've had great partners in all those matches, yeah. but they've still... They've held they, their own. Yeah. Every match AOP's been in has been, has been the shit. Yeah. So... You know, to be honest with you, I, I'm. Whenever they first started having their feuds and stuff, and they got the belts, right when, before we go into the match and stuff and watch it, I am. I didn't have like high hopes mm. for them because we, I knew they were green. I was like, eh. And they're me, super inexperienced. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it, it's in every time, really, with every match, I kind of get that feeling. But it always turns out to be good. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you're right about that. I mean, even though they have a track, a proven track record of delivering in these matches, every time a new takeover is announced, I'm like, meh, about the tag team until, yeah. the, game, <laughs> until, until the, the match until, starts. Until the match starts, and then they have a fucking awesome match. And I'm like, why do I always do the meh thing? Because <laughs> they always deliver, you know? Eh, eh. It'd be like three years from now, they're headlining WrestleMania. Eh. <laughs> What if, so like, green. Okay, what if we're like that meh and it's good and then we're like, we can't get to the point, okay, it's going to be good and it's like shit. Well, yeah, we actually start having expectations. I mean, and all that. it's inevitable that they're not, they're going to have a less than stellar match. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. Called it. They're green. <laughs> as soon as they lose the championship. Fucking guys don't deserve to be holding yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, so yeah, stellar performances by, by all of the uh, participants of NXT TakeOver. Uh, and that takes us into Backlash. We had the kickoff match, Ty Dillinger defeating Aiden English. Nothing really to take away from there. Um, oh, come on, man. Let's let's get right to it. Let's get let's get right to what people want to hear us talk about. Ten. Gender gender chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> gender winner chicken dinner. That's right. Yeah. That could be the name for this week's episode. All right. So Man, just have to remember man, that. Man. I'll remind you. How did I say it? Gender winner? Win, winner gender chicken dinner? I said gender gender. You try to co-opt it with by putting the second gender into a winner, but I'm going to take credit for either one, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever you want. Whatever you want, even though I'm I'm blatantly claiming ownership. Winner gender chicken dinner. Copyright. Copyright Doug. I think gender gender works better because it's chicken. It's winner gender, winner. Gender gender. So yeah, I agree. Gender, gender, but gender is a winner. Yeah, but that's implied by doing the gender gender thing. All right, we'll do it that way. I agree. For those of you who are listening <laughs> on YouTube, let us know should it have been winner gender or gender winner chicken dinner or gender gender chicken dinner. It, it's it, it's dragon dragon. It's irrelevant. What? It's irrelevant because I am inherently right by doing the thing in the first place. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you want to talk about the main event first? I mean, I kind of feel like people that's what people want to hear. Yeah. Thing, right? Okay. Yeah. That's kind of what they're, uh, we're here about. Um, General Mahal defeats Randy Orton to become new WWE champion. Moving on. No. Um, <laughs> I don't remember it being like a spectacular match. No. It wasn't. But I was anticipating it. And I was still hyped for it. And we were all so still I was, hoping. I was maybe though. Maybe they will. So I was still pumped and all that stuff through the whole match, even though like I'm not. I like parts of Randy Orton, but I'm not a humongous fan as like I Is once it like was. His right arm. Yeah, like his right arm. His bicep, his left nipple. Or? Yeah. Well, what parts do you tweak? like? When toe, you, huh? big toe. Uh, left Dude, eyebrow. You say tweak after nipple. <laughs> nipple ben, tweak. Ben would get all excited. Yeah, I'll tell him. Um. And we we talked about how gender is in the ring. He's not, you know, like what was the words that we used? Uh, he's okay. He's okay. I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what else I was trying to say. But it turned out great, man. Uh, Randy Orton making the Singh brothers fly. God, he was incredibly reckless. I yeah. mean, that could have on in all honesty that could after the second one. You see his face is like, oh shit, I just messed up. And well, he went he, back he, over he there. He knew that he had Yeah, to get him up, wrong. but he was saying, are you okay? Well, whenever... You fucked up. Well, if you... The spot that they went to after this was the double draping DDT, but he was Shit. supposed to pick them both up and roll them in, but the one that he almost killed the most... <laughs> I can't remember who, who's... The second one looked the worst. They both looked kind of bad. Yeah. The, first, the second one was like, I think that guy might be paralyzed, but... He, whenever he goes in there to pick him up, he rolls the first Singh brother like in the ring. He leaves that guy there because he's like, he's, he, I don't know if he's you need to check not. on him. Yeah, but the guy, but I, I'm, I'm saying, guy, I'm sorry. I don't know. I can't remember which, which, which Singh brother. I remember when they were Harvard the Curves here, but I don't know what's who's who. Well, I, I don't even remember which one got it worst as far as getting flung on their fucking head. But what I'm saying is like this the, whoever got it worst. He left down there on purpose, like younger like, brother. But he, but he just ran. He just the guy just ran back over there and got in place mm -hmm. for them. Yeah, so that they could they could finish the spot. But goddamn, that was reckless. Mm hmm. I agree, man. I agree. You can see the expression on his face, like, oh, I just fucked up. Yeah. 
Yeah, you did, man. You'll realize how small they are compared to you, man. But he didn't even clear the fucking monitors off like most people do. Yeah. That happened a lot during that pay-per-view. Was it that match where they just didn't clear the... Um, well, he did. He threw one on each table, but he didn't clear the monitors off. But wasn't... One. There was another time during that pay-per-view where, like, clear the table and someone did something. They didn't clear the table. Something like that, right? I don't yeah. know. I can't oh, I, that's what I want to say. I don't that might have been the Zayn and Corbin match. Yeah, I think that was it. But um, or the uh, Styles and Owens because didn't Styles try and go for like the Styles clash on got, the table? Yeah, he got his foot caught in the table, yeah. so it was probably it. But no, it was. I thought that was a good decision because I didn't want the right the right guy won. Yeah. Period. Yeah. I know there are people out there who are not happy about this. I saw like. Like not my champ memes and all this stuff. Uh, the right guy won. Yeah, you don't you don't have to be aesthetically into Jinder Mahal. You don't have to think Jinder Mahal is a great wrestler. He's not a great wrestler. But the right guy won. This is the yeah. story they're telling. And this is what they built to. And if they didn't put on him, it'd be an utter failure. Of their it would own. be a, just a waste of time. Yeah, it would be a failure of their own fucking story they're telling. Yeah, they're elevating a dude. And I'm a, I'm I've been on the train, man. I've been on the train and. We're going to see where it goes from here. Yeah. The the right guy won. It makes all the sense in the world from a business perspective. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to think he's a great worker. Here's here's my problem, though. JBL. He, well, JBL. The is, Maharaja! Cowboy. I mean, JBL is, my, is, is a lot of problems for a lot of people. But, yeah. like, <laughs> that's not the specific problem I was going to talk about. But, oh, okay. like, here, here's the thing. Like, if you're not into gender as a worker... What that's that's fine. You don't have to be into like his style, or you you're well within your right to think he's a he's not a great wrestler. He's not a great wrestler. He's just not. But like, don't argue business. Like, don't if you're gonna sit here and say he's the right that you don't like him as a champ strictly because you don't think he's a great worker. Then don't fucking argue, but you that's that's your line that you that you fucking drew for yourself. You don't get to argue business in any other. You know, in other arguments, to win an argument or to... They should book it like this. Well, yeah, but you can't argue. You can't say, like, later on for uh, business purposes, this is what should be. I don't want to hear that shit. Mm -hmm. If you want to argue solely on the aesthetics of wrestling, then that's fine. That is a perfectly valid way to to view wrestling. You don't have to, as a fan, you don't have to take into account what's best for business. You can only take into account what's aesthetically pleasing to you. That's a completely valid way to be a pro wrestling fan, but don't invoke fucking business in other, in other arguments to, to further your own argument because for business purposes, gender was the right fucking guy. Mm, to win. Yeah. Mm. And that's my point. You know what I mean? You don't have to think he's a great wrestler. He's not a great wrestler, but he's the right guy to win for fucking damn sure. He was the right guy to win. And it establishes a new heel. Yeah. A new star is made. Yeah, and like and like you said last week, Doug, you know sometimes the man makes the title, sometimes the title makes the man. We have a new man. Well, I think it remains to be seen if we have a new man, but I think this is a title. starting point. This is a title. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we judge solely on what, it, if we jump a little bit ahead to SmackDown, I thought that was a great presentation. I thought it was oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. I thought the fucking celebration with the dance. I thought that was cool. I thought it came off really well. I'm glad that it went uninterrupted yes as well. that's yeah, what yeah, i was about yeah. to say they that was it. really good because when they were doing all that stuff i was like okay Orton's no one's interrupting out. yeah and it's like other than jbl rant or talking the whole time the oh, other, other commentators right. were like this quiet and stuff i'm like holy shit they're really giving us to him that's awesome he gave him this his speech there were, and, there were people who got behind gender in that match there were gender yeah. chants yeah and, yeah so man, just a con- uh, big congrats to him. And yeah. what, I mean, what I don't know how much uh, social media you guys like saw or got into after, but the outpouring of support from Absolutely. people in the locker room saying he's a fucking top, like a, a great guy, and he deserves this shit. That's enough for me to be like. All his peers respect and yeah. like enough respect him enough to say, hey, this is a good dude. He deserves this shit. That's enough for me to be like, well, good for that fucking guy, right? Yeah, yeah. And honestly, like, and look, he's being given a chance. Yeah, man. He, it, it remains to be seen if this has fully worked or not. We we don't know yet, yeah. but so far we're on the right track, and we're gonna see where it goes. And for business sense, I, some people were like, uh, you don't have to care that they're trying to appeal to. It. There is like a gazillion people in India. That's a huge population. <laughs> 
representation fucking matters. You don't yeah. have to you don't have to like it, but there are a bunch of fucking Indian people who are fucking stoked to feel like they have some representation. Mm-hmm. I saw it on social media just like clicking hashtags and following people being stoked. Did you guys hear the um the the Indian annou- announcing version of his title win floating around uh-uh. like they were fucking they were like India's number one they were fucking oh wow fl- it was it's very cool you should go go out oh, your yeah. way to find the uh, the Indian announcing like version of uh, that's really cool of his title win like when he wins the announced team flips out it's it's fucking cool to hear hmm. you should really go out of your way to hear it. it's it's very cool but like India has a huge population just like China they're trying to break in both. There is a lot of people that that he representation matters. Those people like want to see like an Indian, an Indian dude being a fucking big deal. That's cool, and from a business sense, that makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, and you don't have to like him as a, think he's a great wrestler. But if you think that's bad business sense, then you're just wrong. That's like what they're trying to do. This is they're trying to appeal to that market. They're trying to to further their business. That makes all the sense in the world to do. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it, it is what it is. You don't have to like it, but it is what it is. And like you said, with the outpouring of, of support, <clears throat> excuse me, I am uh, I'm friends with a lot of uh, people who compete over at Booker T's Reality of Wrestling, mm-hmm. and they were extremely outspoken in in favor well, form. Those, you know, a lot of them uh, worked with Gender whenever he left WWE. He mm-hmm. came down here, worked for some. He was you know, living local. in Houston, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's he did promotions over there. He did mm-hmm. promotions over here. So. I know you did some like NWA Houston stuff when NWA Houston was still a thing before they rebranded or whatever. But you did um, Hurricane. He did stuff for Hurricane Pro. Yeah, gender. So yeah. So I mean, look how many how many times do the fans complain? Oh, I'm sick of seeing X name as as the champion. I wish Me they would right give here. someone new. You I'm know, raising my hand. here's here's something that's new, that's fresh. It's it's somebody new. I would much rather see what they can do with this than sit through another boring Randy Orton title run. Yeah. Is that the India the India announcing? I think so. Yeah. Let me see if I can uh if I can turn it up loud enough for the everyone to hear. They start going like number India is number one and shit. Number one, number one. That's, That's cool. cool, man. Come on. Yeah, I agree, man. That's awesome. That's that, that, that makes cool. my heart happy. Yeah, yeah. I just that's really cool. I mean, it's just pride, you know. Yeah. No, it's cool. I mean, like, you, like representation is important to people. You yeah. know, like that people want to see people they identify with, and that's that's fucking cool. You know, like I mean, whatever. You know, it's yeah. it's cool. So uh, yeah, congratulations to Jinder Mahal. It's really cool to see someone new, someone fresh. Take it's the, just uh, it's just crazy to like. One thing I'm gonna say. This is the nit that I'm gonna pick, and this is the the one way I'm gonna badmouth them. The Singh brothers got to get a better rod than a fucking beat down Ford Explorer. <laughs> if he's a rich guy, they at least got to put the Singh brothers in like an Escalade or something before the limo. You know what I'm talking about? Well, they have the number on the window. I, it, yeah. They never <laughs> show the like limo, but... like gender ever talking to them. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, like they're there my... to to take care of him. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. have to acknowledge them. Yeah, that's just true. Yeah. And I like the touch with the uh, with the rug. You know, they're coming out and they're brushing it down and making sure everything's good. Oh. Did you guys happen to notice on raw. SmackDown? Uh, I mean, SmackDown, why I say Raw? With the celebration? Yeah, they did that. Yeah. It's they what did. you said. It's like on the, on the LED screen. Yeah. On whatever like, he's walking yeah, out. Yeah, you did say that. red yeah. carpet You did now. say that. So um, I'm glad that they're, uh, that they're going with that. And... Uh, you know, it just it's it's that it's the small little details that you notice. You're like, okay, I, I can get behind that. The the celebration was really cool too because the he, he has good music. I don't know mm-hmm. if other people, but I like his music. I I think it's really cool. And just the way I like the mashup of like that like the, of the hip hop with that fucking yeah. like traditional mm-hmm. like Indian shit is like I don't know. I like I think it's I think it sounds cool. But uh, I thought I mean just so we don't have to talk about it later. I thought that. 
the the celebration was really cool too. Yeah, like, well done. So yeah, good for good for him. Good for them for trying something else. Mm-hmm. Good for them for making the right call and not cutting their own like legs out from underneath yeah. themselves. Yeah, and he's gonna hold the championship for at least a week. You know, because there were even talks that no, 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 no. Whenever he beats Randy Orton in Randy Orton's home fucking town. Oh Woo! man. Yeah. One, they like to beat people in their hometown, so you know that's like fifty percent of the battle. <laughs> two, two, you, you, even though it was overdone the way that they played up all the crowd reaction shots, think of the crowd reaction shots when when he sticks it to Orton the second time in St. Louis. Yeah. Mm. No joke. That's a fucking Freaking thing of beauty. Brock Lesnar, dude. He knew that they were gonna shoot him. He's like trying to get the. First of all, <laughs> okay, new rule: you only do reaction shots from fucking kids because I feel like the adults are, pa- are too pandering with yeah. them. They feel like what? Because knowing no me way. knowing me I'm like okay let me just make some stupid ass faces maybe I'll get shot. I've seen a pay per view where someone's literally doing that. Like he's he <laughs> puts his Brock, hands like over his head and he's just that's what Brock, that's what Brock Lesnar <gasps> he's, yeah, that's he's, true, he's, yeah. he's constantly pulling He's faces. hoping to be seen. Wears that same damn shirt and yeah. Get over yourself oh, dude. Did you see the uh, the little the little kid? I don't, yes, the little boy in the red shirt. Uh, he was doing the dance. No, oh no, 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 I didn't see not, that. Not the uh, not the bummed out guy. Oh, okay. I'm talking about on SmackDown during the uh-uh. celebration. They cut to the crowd and there's this little kid and he's like doing this little dance. That's thing awesome. To, it was very cool. I oh, that's know. cool. I was like, that's that's awesome. I don't know. I want to I want to sidetrack us a little bit, uh, going to something different. I printed all this all out. Right. Um, so Jinder Mahal is officially the fiftieth. WWE champion. Um, so no, I can't name them all. Don't put me on the spot. Well, you don't have to name them all. I was just gonna alternate, go back and forth, and see uh, if y'all can name. Uh, see WWE champion. Yes, not world heavyweight. Or Correct. Does that count. Correct. Because technically, John Cena is a thirteen-time WWE champion. John Cena. Okay, I'll give you that one. Randy Orton. <laughs> all right, I'll give you that one. <laughs> well, Jinder Mahal's already been stated. See, so okay, so you, uh, so Doug, you said Randy Orton. Yeah. All right. Let me try. I'm trying to mark these off. They weren't in any. I'm order. bad at these type of things. Kind of sucks. Edge. Well, hang on. <laughs> now you're going too fast. Shit. <laughs> All right. So Edge got it. Uh, where is John? Don't look at these papers, by the way. Oh, yeah, hang I on, hang on. Whoever said John Cena, I gotta say it 12 more times. No. No. Just try and name all 50 of them. Del Rio. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Get your shit together. I know. I tried to organize it, but I was in a hurry. Uh, all right. There's Del Rio. Tyler? Uh, Big Show. Let's see. No. Yeah? I wish yeah. I could have had this, like... In alphabetical order, that would have been so much. Did I get better. Delria? Yes, you did. Uh, Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero is one. Still trying to find Big Show. It's probably not one. Yeah. <laughs> nope, he's there. Okay. Nailed it twice. Dolph Ziggler. Oh, that's one too, man. Yeah. Well, technically, JBL was heavyweight. I don't see Ziggler on this list. Oh, uh, that's probably. I don't know where where they roll the the lineage in it. Um, because it was okay. It was the raw belt. Oh, I got Rey Mysterio is one. Oh wait, that's world heavy, isn't it? No, they haven't listed. He won. Uh, he won right after. Well, um, this will give it away. Uh, right after CM Punk took the title I was about to say uh, after Money in the Bank. That's true, but I. But in my head, I was thinking of the other one, the one where he had the uh, Batista shit and everything. Gotcha, Jeff Harvey. Yep, he had it for forty-two days. Batista. Batista, two two titles. Tri- it twice. Triple H. Yes. Shawn Michaels. Yep. Undertaker. Yep. Austin. 
Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and mark off JBL because I said that. Rock. Yep. Mankind. Yep. Hulk Hogan? Yeah, of yep. course. Yeah, go ahead and get the uh, the obvious ones so that way you can... Uh, Brother! Get, so we can struggle Sam later. Uh, nope! Yeah. <laughs> Backland. Yep. Did we say Bray Hart already? Nope. Yep. <laughs> nope. Yep. Uh, Diesel. Yep. Bork Laser. Nope. Brock Lesnar. Yep. Yokozuna. Yokozuna. Yep. Is that Ric Flair? We should have. You haven't. Okay. But you have now. Woo! Yep. Uh, Warrior. Correct. Goldberg. No, that was World Heavyweight. Yeah, that's correct. He was not WWE champion. He was Universal Champion. Yeah. And World Heavyweight. And World Heavyweight, yes. That guy, uh, um... Pedro Morales? Man, good one. He's well, I know he was after San Martino. I, I sh what I'm doing is dancing all over the place instead of sticking in air as Richard should Morales. Be. No. <laughs> 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 Good try, though. <laughs> Good try. Uh, you, be you be careful. That's like Beetlejuice. He... <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that name. Say his name too. We're coming. Oh shit! I just got a message. Yeah. Um. You just sensed it through the air. <laughs> Are you talking about me? Um. Oh, shiitake. Um. Nope. <laughs> Uh, okay. Sting. Or is that Universal? No, he, was, he, he didn't have either of those. What are you talking about? He oh, was he, World he Heavyweight. Didn't capture, or no, he, he was WCW World oh, Heavyweight. Oh, he didn't capture it last time when he was he came back. No, he didn't capture any titles in WWE. Kane. Yep. Yep. Just so we know, like, how many have we got? Jeez, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. You've gotten a lot. Great Kali? No. That was World Heavyweight then. Yes. <sighs> was Benoit World Heavy? Or was he. Because him and Eddie had it at the same time, but different brands. Don't look at my list. I'm not looking at you. Well, does, Benoit, does Benoit count? Is he on the list? No, he was not. Okay. Did we say Chris Jericho? No, we didn't. You have now. Chris Benoit was world heavyweight. Yeah, you're right. Um, who's that other guy? You're doing really well. I'll give I'll give you all that. You're doing very well. Did we say Mark Henry? That's world heavyweight. Yeah. Remember, the big gold belt was not the WWE championship. Daniel Bryan. There you go. My boy, D. Bra. Ha <laughs> ha. How can we forget the bro? Yeah. Damn it. Saving him. That's what we're doing. Oh. Oh, um. That's one too. Me too. Go ahead. RVD. Yep. Bray Wyatt. Yep. How can we forget? Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. They're getting, you know, almost running the table here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, 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 eighteen left. Eighteen out of fifty are left. Okay. Ding, 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 It'd be easier if I was like looking at it like who we already said. Now I'm trying to remember who we've even said at this point. Um, put your phone down. No, I'm not. This is so. <laughs> a likely story. She's no. texting you the answers. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, 
I'm I'm dead air. I'll give you a hint for one of them. He won it and immediately vanquished it. He was known for being really tall. You mean vacated? Yeah, that's what I said. Relinquished it and vacated it. <laughs> oh, well, DiBiase bought it from Andre, didn't he? Yes, but DiBiase was not considered a... But they count Andre, right? They do. That's what, that's what I'm saying. They count Andre. Yep. Alright, that'll, that'll probably be good, unless y'all have any more guesses. I mean, there are obviously some really obvious people who are just blanking. Sure. Uh, I'll run down the, uh, the, the remaining names on this list. Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. I thought we already said Macho. I would have said Macho. Did you? I, I no, uh, I thought we did. Maybe uh, we didn't. Because uh, me and Tyler were blurting him out simultaneously for a while. Yeah, and I was trying to catch up. So maybe you said a couple of them that, that I wasn't able to get. Uh, Kurt Angle. Oh, that's obvious. Was one of them. Macho's um, obvious. So we missed that. Superstar Billy Graham. Yeah. Um, Seth Rollins. Oh, oh. think about Seth Rollins. Sheamus. And Sheamus. The Miz. Damn it! Yeah. Your boy AJ Styles. I was thinking. I don't know why I couldn't. I was like, what SmackDown, the man, SmackDown champions. That's right. Uh, no, uh, we didn't say John Cena, did we? Yeah, you did. Oh, okay. Well, I gave you all that one because oh, okay. he was you know, thirteen time, whatever. Uh, Roman Reigns. God, how do we miss Roman Reigns? <laughs> yeah. Dean Ambrose. Dude, I feel like what the hell? <laughs> Psycho Sid. That's um, what I was trying to come up. Yeah, Sergeant Slaughter. The Iron Sheik. Fuck. Sheiky baby. How we yeah. miss him? Fuck. <laughs> Buddy Rogers. Ivan Koloff. Stan Stasiak. Uh, Antonio Inoki. And of course, Vince McMahon. Uh, See, I almost said Vince too, but I, I was. So we did, you think we did good? Oh, yeah. Y'all did but great. Still, no, we, there's we, a lot we of. We have a pro wrestling podcast we did embarrassingly bad. Yeah. No, 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 there's no, a no. lot of. I put you guys on the spot, and you guys. I think I, I'm going to give you guys a pass. You guys did well. Thank you, I'm teacher. not satisfied. I'm sure there's some of our listeners who are going, oh my God, just say this person's name. But you know, there yeah. was a lot of like current day superstars we did not guess. Yeah, because you're 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 going in the mind of of the past. You know, I was, I was is, thinking about AJ Styles. I was problem, trying to think what my title. My problem he had. is, is I like I start like trying to concentrate on an error, and I was like, let me make sure I get all these guys. In. Yeah, and then I like then I. My attention diverts to someone Tyler says, and then I'm like, "Well, let me focus on this." And then, <laughs> so it's Tyler's I, fault. Because I will know, but but for a while, if you notice, I was like, "Let me get all the early guys." Yeah. I started going through like San Martino, Morales, Backlund, like all those. I tried to get those dudes out of the way, yeah. and then I like I got sidetracked with like eh. there are a few on there I I wouldn't have been able to get. So, you know, maybe we learned some of our listeners. Maybe we didn't. Who knows? Uh, but let's talk about. Uh, backlash some more. We already covered Jinder Mahal uh, winning the championship match. Um, the this is kind of a bad show, you guys. Huh? This is kind of a bad show. I, I ba- backlash. Backlash. Was oh, kind of backlash. Bad. Yeah. I was about like this show. Come on. Now. I mean, this show sucks too. Oh, but. okay. Um, Good point. Yeah, I felt bad for Luke Harper and Eric Rowan because they were kind of just put in a match and that's what. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Kevin Owens and AJ Styles match. I thought it was fine, but I I didn't think it was like up to my expectations for these guys. I've been seeing a lot. Excuse me. I was see, I've been seeing a lot of positive comments on the matchup, like saying, "Oh my gosh, it was great." You know, it was probably see, the match of the night. That. Like maybe it was match of the night, but I didn't see <laughs> the, the need to throw admiration at it or anything. You know? Yeah, like I I wasn't necessarily blown away by the match. Uh, I like the fact that they ended it in a count out. You know. AJ Styles getting his leg caught up and all that. Uh, I thought it was a nice touch, but it wasn't really anything. Wow. That, also, that this Nakamura me. for a pay per view debut or a special event debut, I thought was very underwhelming. Yeah. To me, it's the wrong. He was on. He did way too much selling. This should have been way more of a showcase match for him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he did a lot. Of like it. he should be acquainting the part because this is his first like match, like match match on the, yeah. the main roster. This is his introduction to the main roster. He crowd. should be acquainting the audience who is not familiar with with a lot of his offense instead of doing so much fucking selling. Yeah. And to me, this should have been way more about Nakamura being shown off 
than selling for Ziggler. Right? To me, it was just like underwhelming and the wrong approach. I'm uh, I'm also skipping to mm-hmm. uh, SmackDown. He did that too with um, the tag match. Well, I I thought that originally too, but they actually broke it down to where they both they both faced in peril. Like they they almost like you could almost draw a line down the match where first he did it. And then, then you're like, oh, well, AJ's taking the hot tag. That's odd. But then they cut AJ's uh, momentum off, and then he sells for a while, and then they go back to another hot tag to to Nakamura. So it's like they all, they both did face and peril segments, mm-hmm. and they both did hot tag segments. So it, it's – I don't know. It's well, just not a traditional thing like, that structure. You, that you say about Nakamura that it's like – He hides in tag matches? <sighs> no, no, no. Uh, oh, yeah, that's his reputation. Oh, New is Japan, it? Well, New Japan does, because the style is, is so aggressive, they do a lot of, they do less, like, singles matches, they do, like, a lot of multi-man matches, so guys can sort of hang out and not have to, like, kill themselves so much. <laughs> and then he just has a reputation for hiding in tag matches. But going back to single matches and stuff, what was the thing that you said that, you know, they call him big... Uh, big match. No, but this is what's yeah, going to be match. But I know, like... You said that you could tell when he's motivated when he's not and stuff like that. It just depends on his attitude. Yeah, but this to me, this was less about his motivation levels, although I did have a problem. It did feel like he was very unmotivated towards the like second half of his NXT run. He felt complacent and just going through the motions. But this to me was just... Whoever whoever laid out the match, if this was an agent's call or whatever, they, w- they had the wrong idea for what you do for this guy's first mm. match. To me, it's just like... You let him do all his cool shit and run yeah. through Dolph, you know. Because Dolph doesn't have any momentum to to sacrifice. He's, he's a former champion and Oh, okay. Well, when <laughs> they start treating him like that, then people will respond to him like that. Yeah. But at least I mean I mean he won though. It's good. Yeah, so. of course he had to win. Right they, person they won. The, yeah. They built the like the all the stuff of the pay per view around them, you know. Mm. Yeah. What the fuck, Dolph also, Ziggler won. It was sort of weird, <laughs> yeah. that he, and it was sort of weird that he went on first too, and not yeah. that he should, and not that he should have main evented because the gender thing is a big deal and whatever. Mm-hmm. But it was just sort of odd. Uh, we, we saw the welcoming committee defeat Naomi, Charlotte, and Becky Lynch. I don't know why I can't remember that. It was nothing memorable. Maybe that's why I don't know. Most of this card was just sort of there. Yeah, it was kind of. Uh, one of the matches that, that stuck out, and we'll get to the tag match uh, in just a moment, uh, the Sami Zayn and Baron Corbin match. Because very early in the match, Sami Zayn starts favoring his back. And it didn't seem know. like anything really happened to, to do it. I don't know, man, because that's what I felt like. But throughout the match, he was he was still favoring, but it's not as much. So I was like, oh, that's part of the thing, I thought. Because at first, when he started doing it, I was like, oh, shit, what did he just do? His- there have been at least five matches that Zayn's had since he's been <laughs> on the main roster that I thought he was legitimately hurt in, yeah. that he came out just like, oh, he was just selling. <laughs> <laughs> I think if that's the case, you have to tip your hat to him and be like, yeah. dude's pretty good at selling. I had to think about it because I was like, okay. well, because hey, th- Are they saying he's hurt coming out of this? Well, even on uh, even on Talking Smack, we watched, and they were like, "Dude, how's your back?" He's like, "Well, it hurts, but okay, I'll yeah, be yeah. okay." Yeah, and then he competed on SmackDown. Right, right. But here's the thing. Okay, I've had lower back issues, and I know you have, and yeah. if you've had lower back issues too. No, mine's the like my neck from the okay. time I was playing WWE. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Real hyped up, and I did yeah. the, old, the warrior rope shake, pantomiming yeah. it, and oh I God. I hurt my neck. Doing Lessons like learned: stretch before you do that. Yeah. Uh, don't do the rope shakes unless you're going to stretch first. <laughs> yeah. um, important those next like, next here, neck exercises. Here's the thing about I the. I swear be- to God, my neck has never been the same since. I swear to God. <laughs> That's nuts. Well, how how bad were you doing? Were you going like all crazy? Like fucking hype, dude. I was. Oh, into, can uh, you show me uh, how you were doing? Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, the thing with lower back issues oh, is, I mean. Once you do something with your lower back, dude, you it's hard move. to fucking move at all. You can't function. So I was like, I, I bit at first, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. How in the hell is he still running around doing it with, if he has lower back issues? Because 
it's hard to move around and like because uh, you just want to like freeze. I'm like, I don't want to fucking move because mm-hmm. it hurts no matter what I do. Well, maybe he's just like 20 times the man that you are. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. <laughs> and that's that's something that, that I was true. thinking. Not <laughs> just, n- not, to degree, not to that degree. Not to that degree. But that's something that I was thinking. I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> <I'm not> thinking, <laughs> yeah, I was like, Tyler's a pussy and he, he's a man. <laughs> Tyler's such a wuss. No, um, you know. Sam Zayn, obviously, he's he's that diehard mentality of wrestler, similar to Daniel Bryan. He'll, Underdog, he'll wrestle hurt, you know. So I was thinking, oh my God, he's legitimately hurt his back, and he's just trying to tough through it until he gets backstage and all that. So because it seemed to happen out of nowhere, it was just all of a sudden he was like, oh God, like maybe he got a pinched nerve. Fucking mind tricks, man. Well, I'm thinking maybe he got like a pinched nerve or something, and then it ended up working itself out throughout the match. But I man, that. it's probably just his selling. To be honest with you, because that's if I mean, that if that's what it is, then hook line good and sinker. Lord, he, yeah. he got me. I, I bet. I Holy wasn't. Crap. I wasn't joking when I said that this was probably like the fourth or fifth time that yeah. I thought he had been legitimately he, hurt. He's good at like doing that, and then whenever like when he gets hit, he just crumples and stuff yes. like that. He's good at that. He wa- his wobbly leg selling is bad. A lot of people's wobbly leg selling is bad. It's very like okay, I can't. But his is just my body has given out. The way his like legs bend, I don't know. It's like he does it better than <laughs> most people. Yeah. It's like he's legit locked, knocked out. And yeah, wow, that's how you sell Dolph Ziggler. Come on, get it together. <laughs> um, but yeah, Sami Zayn ends up toughing it out and getting the victory over Baron Corbin. Um, the Usos versus Brizongo. Well, this felt like a SmackDown match. It felt like it, but it was so much. I had so much fun watching this match. I, I think comedy has its place on the card, and I didn't have a problem with it, but it, it definitely felt out of place. It definitely yeah. felt like yeah. this is something you'd see on SmackDown. This is a handicap match. I mean, you, I was thinking like the team of Brizongo would take this match a little more seriously because it's their first big opportunity. Oh, we got to make sure that. They, but, I mean, they came out and did comedy. They replayed but, that fashion yeah. finals for a second, so that's I guess why he wanted to dress up as a janitor or whatever. I'm yeah, like, I mean, he came out dressed. I guess as a that janitor played and, into if you think about it, that played into all the disguises and stuff. Sure. And what you said, the you and JBL four on two. Yeah. There's a janitor and there's a grandma and there's Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Mm-hmm. Granny Breeze. But uh, the Usos end up getting the victory. Uh, jumping ahead over to SmackDown, uh, they had sort of a rematch. Uh, Tyler Breeze defeats Jay Uso. Fandango defeats Jimmy Uso. And then they sort of had the um, uh, tag match made official. At, at first, I was like, oh, come on. This is fucking lazy as shit. Because they did the Sammy rematch. Three times. They did, this, they did the Sammy um What's his name? Rematch. Sammy Baron Corbin. Corbin. Did he yeah. Roll, roll up. up immediately and they yeah. If I'm, fi- I ended up being fine with it because it, what it did is transitioned into an actual tag match. Yeah. So that's how they set up. But but that was I, three times. That three night. matches on that card that end with a roll up like that. Yeah, but I mean, the tag match sort of nullifies the the those. But if they hadn't done the tag match, I'd be like, that's just fucking lazy booking. Yeah. An agent couldn't say, hey, we're all doing roll ups as our finish. We <laughs> match in every finish? match. <laughs> roll up. Ra- raise roll your up. hand if you're doing a roll up finish. Yeah. Well, it's I'm like Raw. It. Raw was the same with their dis- DQs. They had two ma- two or three matches that ended in a disqualification. It's just lazy. I didn't see Raw. So <laughs> no. I'm you didn't on, miss a whole I'm, lot. I'm picking on SmackDown. Yeah. Um, it's sort of like that. Um, uh, the first um, documentary that Cabana did where it was him and Danielson and Sal Renaro and they show them all in the locker room and they're all, everyone's going over their matches or whatever and then they show like three or four different matches that are getting broken down where they're all like, yeah, we're working the arm and then like the one to, there's like the one people who are working out their match like, we're going to do the leg. It looks like everyone else over there is doing the arm. It's like, <laughs> that's what it was like. Hey, raise your hand if you're doing a roll-up finish so no one else does a fucking <laughs> roll-up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, the main things from SmackDown, uh, Shane McMahon introduced the Money in the Bank participants, AJ Styles, Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, Dolph Ziggler, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Kevin Owens ends up talking himself into the match, uh, so we have our six competitors. Look, the what Owens said when he came out was dawning on me before he came out and said it, because whenever... Shane came out and was like, here's going to be your Money in the Bank uh, participants for this year, I was like, loser... Lost his match. 
Loser lost his match. Okay, Sammy. Yeah, I see why he's in this. Loser. He lost his match. I was like, why? I was like, what is going on here? And then, and then Owens comes out. I was like, says exactly what you're thinking. Yes, yes. But here's the thing: good villains are a large portion of of what makes good villains so good is like the ability to like identify with a villain. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean all the way. That means like. I see where he's coming from, but I don't agree with his methods. Or I can see why he thinks he got a raw deal, even though because he doesn't know the whole story or something like that. You identify with the villain. You see where they're coming from. You see how they might think and feel the way that they do. But ultimately, there's something along the way mm-hmm. that 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 lets you know that they are actually the bad guy still, right? Yeah. But... There's a big difference between that and when he, when you're actually just right, you're not the villain. <laughs> when he actually comes <laughs> out and just says, "Hey, why are all the guys in the Money in the Bank fucking match losers from the from from Backlash, and I retain my title and I don't even consider he's not the bad guy anymore. He's just right. Shane is either incompetent or playing <laughs> favorites. He's not. He he ceases he ceases to be the villain. He's just right at this point." <laughs> I That's mean, a good he, point. Yeah. I mean, AJ, you can make an you can make an argument for AJ in saying, well, AJ's won a lot of big matches recently. He's beat a lot of people. He's a former champ. He did and not. He get, only lost by count he, out. He, he, he didn't built get beat decisively. You didn't beat him. He didn't get beat decisively. But Corbin, one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Ziggler. Ziggler, one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Like, why are these guys in the fucking match? And he just he he comes out and says exactly what you're Corbin thinking. Corbin lost and he's receding. So. <laughs> I mean, like, and he lost again that night. <laughs> like, why not? Why not Har- Harper won his match? Why is why? Yeah. Is, why? Why didn't they put Harper in here? And I get, I get it. It's because they're already stacked with good guys. Well, you got to Cor- keep it even. Well, know? and also yeah, Corbin's like, a project, so they want to keep sure. him like a, a high, um, high priority, high visibility, high profile. Yeah, high profile. My mind was a little different. Like before all that stuff came, I didn't actually think of that. But when they did the five, I was like, why is there five? There's usually six. Well, of course, I felt like, of course, they were going to like, well, there was that one year they did like seven, which was really weird. <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, Didn't I they do they, eight one year. I don't know. It's maybe so. I think they, they sort of change it up, like depending on what they want to do. But yeah, I mean, like there's a money in the bank. There's it, three people. There's a real <laughs> simple workaround to this. If you want Corbin in the match, Shane comes out and says, knock, you're in. You won your match. Sammy, you're in. You won your big match. If you want, like, Corbin in, Corbin beats somebody else as a qualifier to the yeah. match. It's real simple. Yeah. Like, why come out there and You got to go up against Mojo Rawley. Yeah, and then he beats Mojo and he's in the match, or whoever you decide. James Ellsworth. Like, why have Shane come out here, look like a fucking asshole, let your top heel point out how he's just an asshole and incompetent? <laughs> <laughs> like, why do that? Why, why would you do it that way? I don't know. I don't know. They really think that people, like, are, are dumb or don't care or that wins and losses don't matter. And I guess they present it like it doesn't matter, but come on, man. Literally the first thing that went through my head when when people started coming, I was like, oh, he just lost his big match. Oh, he and it was like the third guy before we found a winner, you know what I mean? <laughs> ah, I don't know, man. Winner, gender, chicken dinner. Come on, man. Gender, gender. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm with Doug. I'm, I'm with Doug. Because it's winner, winner, chicken dinner. I know. All right. So it's gender, gender. Gender, gender. Uh, don't know. Gender, gender, chick, what the fuck? Chicken dinner. How chicken about dinner. gender, 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 say. gender? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we should change it to that. <laughs> Just name the show gender, 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 gender. <laughs> People were like, what did he fall What the hell is up with this? <laughs> did he fall gender. asleep on the keyboard? Gender, gender. <laughs> Have you seen that, uh, that commercial where uh, it's like the news report? Oh, where they're like it's, reading the teleprompter the guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mike. <so> it, hey. <laughs> gender. All right. Gender, gender. Gender, gender. Gender, gender. I am Groot. Um, Buy him some chicken. I am gender. Uh, so, yeah, we found out the Money in the Bank participants. Becky Lynch and Charlotte defeat Natalia and Carmella. Sami Zayn wins with a roll up, and then Baron Corbin attacks. Nothing uh, to really take away from there. We got Fashion Files, Jinder Mahal Celebration. I, I, I laughed out. at the Fashion Files because they set up that stuff in his office. And like, I guess you're wearing our, our guns now, too. Wait, you got guns? Yeah, it's like, it's like you're not real cops. I know. That's what my dad told me. <laughs> I did laugh. So. They were pretty good. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, we pretty much covered all the bases for for SmackDown. Raw, I felt it was kind of lackluster. Uh, I'm watching, you know, I'm I'm more interested in in SmackDown. What? I don't know. You ran out. Of here. Oh, I guess he uh, don't. Where will you be when? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, did you get to catch Raw? Uh, yes. Uh, well, not the last hour. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think yeah. like both the brands can be mad, but still, SmackDown's better than Raw. Yeah, it's just there. There, there are more interesting stories on on SmackDown than there are Raw. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I'm just finding myself looking at my phone. I'm like wanting to pull out my Nintendo Switch and and play Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Um, I'm just not being very focused on Raw lately. And they're just not really giving me any reason to tune in. Um, they're they're not focusing on the on the cruiserweights at all. I mean, we had Akira Tozawa going up against Arya Davari. Why? Uh, I don't know. To set up the match for Two Hundred Five Live. Here and uh, Kendrick. Yeah, I mean, hell, they interrupted the match to talk to Brian Kendrick. Like while the match is going on, he's he's watching the match, and they have him turn around and talk so it's like what's the point in that uh, sorry I know this is off subject somebody whatever. wanted coke I got two ooh hey bear sure I know this is off the off the subject sorry I, there's one thing I want to say about Smackdown right mine's before. Montel Jordan what I like about you oh, that's do. awesome um, I forgot nice. well, yeah one thing sorry uh, Smackdown mm-hmm. the commercials and it was playing yeah lots. that was nice I liked it I hope they do more of it. I would I would really like to watch the match when they go to commercial. In and theory, now we I did. would like it, but I ultimately I just find it distracting. Because yeah. I can't quite pay the level of attention that I I feel like I need to. Yeah. Just because they make that screen so small and the other ones. And then the sound is like talking about something that's not Which really good. Really that's a plus in that's my a, book. That's a plus. Yeah. Um Okay, sorry, raw. No, you're fine. Um, so yeah, Akira Tozawa defeats Arya Davari. Um, with all this stuff, like with the um, cruiserweight, like what the hell are they gonna do with like the the title? We okay? How many times has Neville? I heard they beat? might be cutting the show to like thirty minutes or something. Wow. What? Wow. That won't surprise me. There was just a lot of talk of like format changes, so I don't know if that's what they settled on, but that was. At least a couple of weeks ago or something, this was the talk. Something right? brought up. I mean, what is Neville going to do? I mean, he's already beat uh, Austin Aries, what, twice? Yep, and they have another match, I'm sure, coming up. I really the, thought uh, they would have put the belt on Austin. It's going to be an Extreme Rules and a uh, submission match. So. Third time's a charm? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, Roman Reigns ends up defeating Bray Wyatt via disqualification after Samoa Joe attacks, and Seth Rollins comes out, and they brawl, and match is set up for later on that night. The very next match also ends in a disqualification. Elias Sampson going up against Dean Ambrose. The Miz runs down to the ring and hits Elias Sampson. I was going to text y'all. He worked. Oh, I, did, I missed it. Yeah. Damien match? Yes. He did good. Yeah, well, I, just, I was gonna text you and be like, "You hear Corey Graves bragging on Elias Sampson? He's always shitted on him and mm-hmm. stuff like that." Because okay, uh, Elias was always—I mean, he's a heel, and Corey was like, "He because okay, so Elias just, was always losing him. and stuff." And he's like, "What's well, so up? He's Galver. He sucks." He was just saying this. And now he's like, uh, "Michael Cole's like, hey, uh, you know about Elias? Why don't you break it down?" And he's like praising him. I'm like. Nah. No, you just changed your character. You're always shitting on Elias. Yeah. You need to be consistent, Corey Graves. But he's generally pretty good about that stuff, though. Yeah. Um, I'll give him a pass. I don't remember. Maybe I just didn't really pay attention or they just didn't show him in that light, but I don't remember me enjoying a match with Elias Sampson hmm. as much as I did this little I don't thing remember any matches with Elias Sampson. <laughs> Maybe that one NXT takeover against No Way Jose? I think. Anyways. Um, yeah, Elias Sampson wins via disqualification because Miz came down and hit Elias and reminded Dean Ambrose, if you get disqualified at Extreme Rules, I get your title. So that could be a possibility. If that's the case, Miz just needs to walk have right up to Ambrose. 
Have or, Maurice attack him. Yeah, or you can do that. I think that's a that was a good way they played it because I was like, oh man, Elias is uh, the debut match. He's gonna <laughs> lose. Is who he was going up against. Yeah. But that was kind of a good way because to me, Elias didn't come off as a hill. He's just there. He's just there to annoy people. Stuff. Yeah, but he did mouth. I think at the end, you're gonna get yours to Miz or something like that. But no, I mean, I I Joel. enjoyed the match with Elias Samson. I was like, holy moly, okay, cool. <laughs> um, after that, we saw um, Big Cass being led somewhere by a referee, and it turns out Enzo was attacked. Oh my goodness, he's been attacked, and uh, Kurt Angle was there as well. Kurt Angle and. Uh, Big Cass turned to Kurt Angle and said, you better find out who did this before I do, and walks off. So that's leading a lot of speculation that it could be possibly Big Cass himself who attacked. Uh, That's one of the rumors. And there was also a backstage moment where you can kind of see it if you look close enough, but the Revival walking somewhere backstage. Well, what's his name? He's still injured, huh? Well, yeah, but I mean, he's... In the healing process, but he, I'm sure they can find some way we to have him on TV. Yeah, we all need a nice big hug. Um, but yeah, so someone spotted him. Um, no, um, backstage spotted the revival walking backstage. So that could possibly be. Who knows? Who knows? Um, Finn Balor came out. Paul Heyman came out. Pa- uh, Paul Heyman pretty much put over Finn Balor. Saying, "Did you like that?" Um, I thought it certainly Weird. gets everyone's attention towards Finn Balor as a possible as the possible winner because Heyman came out and was like, out of all the people who are participating in the Fatal Five Way, we're most intrigued by you. <clears throat> so I thought you know, Heyman did a fine job and um Balor went on to face Carl Anderson and he got the win. So got former to see. club members. They hung it out. I don't think so. Not this he time. Hung it out with a kick to the face. Yeah, kick to the face. Uh, Sasha Banks versus Alicia Fox again. Um, Alicia Fox. Yeah, the beautiful Alicia Fox. Sasha Banks gets the win, and we're probably going to see uh, a mixed tag match. In he the got end. punked out by Sasha. Yeah, he did. So we're probably going to see... Mixed tag match. I think Cedric Alexander is the front runner to be Sasha's tag match uh, tag partner. He's back. He will be. He's coming off injury. I think any day now. Yeah. Um. So well, I'll, he's. I just saw that match. or Whatever he just had. Was it yesterday? Oh, oh is he back? Yeah, he's back. Oh, okay. My bad. He, he uh, returned on two o five. Yeah, he beat a no name. <clears throat> no name. Who Mr. was the no name? said his name, but I forgot. I don't recognize him. I'll look it up. His first name is Nam. His last name is Ami. It's no N-O-M-A-M-E. Shit. Can't remember. Oh, he's no going to look it up. No name. Uh, got a promo from Goldust saying the Golden Age is back. Anything back, really? Baby. No. Uh, Kalisto defeats was, Apollo Crews. makeup's weird. It's like all yellow, but then it's like black where his beard's supposed to be yeah yeah the underneath the chin and all that you should have put like a fake beard on <laughs> it is the fake beard let's just paint it's not a real beard it's beard fake black beard that's true pirate <laughs> pirates are in this year <laughs> um Kalisto defeats apollo cruz titus o'neill was unhappy about that uh matt hardy goes up against sheamus the winner determines the stipulation in their matchup for Extreme Rules. Matt gets the victory and chooses a cage match, which was kind of surprising. Um, But I saw one person, because you would expect them to pick a ladder match. That's sort of their specialty, or a TLC match of some sort. Uh, But they went with a cage match, and I saw one person saying, well, they are going to have Money in the Bank two weeks later. I thought it might just be someone you didn't know, and I was like, maybe I'll know, (laughs) because I'm all up my own ass about what I know. And then (laughs) then I looked it up, I was like, yep, I don't know who that is. You're (laughs) up your own ass there, Doug. Um, So, yeah. So, we get a cage match at Extreme Rules. 
Uh, Austin Aries defeats Tony Nice in front of Neville, and then Neville applies the. Who's uh, Tony's niece? I don't know, but uh, Neville applies the rings of Saturn to Tony Nice to say what is he this doing? is he's just you. there. Tony Nice is yep. just there. Yep. So like many other cruiserweights, just like uh, Drew Gulak, they're doing that no fly thing. Yeah, but that's like. It's just a, it's a, like a takeoff of his whole like campaign for a better impact. Uh, imp- I said impact zone. I, I meant combat zone. I, I apologize to, to CCW for comparing the oh. impact. Fuck that mm-hmm. out. Um, Alexa Bliss defeats Mickey James. She pulls out the kendo stick, hits her in the back, and then Bailey comes out. Wow. Whatever. Um, some uh, main event Samoa Joe. You don't remember the little pamphlets he had? Okay. The what? The little pamphlets he had when we talked to him. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's basically the same thing. Uh, main event Samoa Joe and Bray Wyatt defeat Rollins and Reigns via submission. That pretty much does that for Raw. Kind of lackluster. Didn't really hold my attention that much. Doug, I don't think you missed too much. Okay, I feel all right about that. Yeah. I don't want um, really... Other than that, we just have one little bit of hot topic that we uh, haven't already covered. I have covered. one in my head, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What is that? Um, I read something online where someone, uh, I don't know if it was a podcast, or someone sat down and interviewed uh, Ed Nordholm, uh, the guy from uh, Anthem Sports. Mm. Oh, yeah, uh, I did see that. Yeah. Something along the lines where, the, like, the... He basically claimed that WWE had no interest at all in getting the broken character. Yeah, then I saw something else where it's like, WWE doesn't want to reach out and get it, or whatever. They, mm-hmm. I mean, they want the the characters and stuff, but I guess they're relying on Matt Hardy to go through it instead. Huh. I don't know how true that is. Well, the, the Hardy's claims are that it was their money they put up to shoot all that shit. Because Impact was broke, and also their own creative direction, so they are claiming ownership of it. Like they put they put the money into it, and they put the like intellectual property, I guess, into it. Hmm. So I don't know. Like, and it was before Anthem even acquired Impact. So yeah, he's was, still doing all that stuff because Matt Hardy is still doing the character uh, stuff. Because yeah. I like him on Facebook. He posts stuff like on WWE. Like WWE will post a video. So he will repost that video on top of it. It's like, oh, watch Brother Nero do this. And I'm like, okay. So he'll say it or he'll type it, but I guess they can't. Can't portray it on TV. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, Like I said, only one other bit of Hot Topic news, and I know Tyler's going to be excited. Okay. I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, I know Tyler's going to be excited about this one. WWE 2K18 set to release this fall. They announced it. Is that a really hot topic? We know that's coming every year, though, right? It's like, yeah, we know well, it's going to be there. I it's mean. official. It's confirmed. WD, WWE cool 2K18. On Switch? Ooh. So that's that's a... Nope. That would be pretty Probably cool not. if they do that. And also, if you think about it, I don't know how many... I mean, I, I assume that they already started with, like, after the last game, and it, they get into, like, all the new people and stuff. If If I think correctly, if they can get, like... All, All the, the cruiserweights. cruiserweights, maybe like some like UK guys, you know, and I don't know. Hmm. Need to have the biggest roster ever. All the current talent. Well, that's All of every them. every year, it's been like the highest. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna keep on going. We're, every year, we're gonna add two more. Um, and you get new skins. Yeah. So yeah, those some UK guys, you know, you know the the newer NXT guys, like you know, Cassius. Roderick. Mm-hmm. LG, a dog. Cedric Alexander, Rich Swan. Get yeah. all those guys. Yeah, heck yeah. So, you know, man, every year I'm like, take my money. So, <laughs> there you go. So, that's going to pretty much do it for us this week. If you have any questions for us, feel free to leave a comment on our YouTube channel, WNS Video. Y'all want to talk about Stokely Hathaway now repping Catch Point? Yeah. I didn't see any. I of saw that video. Yeah. Well, and, uh, well, uh, it's cool. Yay High left, huh? Yeah, he did. So did Riddle. But, mm. so who's in it? Who's? It's just Hot Sauce and Dickinson and Jarga. 
So is Yehi and Riddle still together? Or they just went their separate ways. No, they're just they're just both like we're not down with um, Stokely. But Stokely's awesome. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. that man. <laughs> man, I bet you he's so good at what he does. Taking a picture with him or got some of that merch. I literally tried. Like I saw him doing an interview. And I kept trying to like weasel my way over there to talk to him, <laughs> but I didn't want to just be like, "Hey, Stoke, <laughs> <laughs> take a picture." Maybe you should have. <laughs> I probably should have. I regret not doing it now, but you know that dude's really good at what he does. Anyway, I just want to talk about Stokely a little bit. So cool. Uh, if you have iTunes, feel free to subscribe to our show on iTunes. Check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com, WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook. Uh, we're on Stitcher, Beyond Pod, Player FM, and Satchel. Just search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Oh, sorry. <coughs> <laughs> the podcast is on Twitter at WNS Podcast. Daniel's at WNS underscore Daniel. Tyler at Tyler underscore Bear. There you go. For the podcast crew, I am Daniel Heron. I'm Ginger Ginger. Come on, man. That's gimmick infringement. I'm Doug. And we will catch you all next week. Tyler Bear.